Okay, so this time I don't even have to ask where did we leave off since um, there's one route I haven't even touched yet, which is Mean Recover and the 2 p.m. time block. The laptop's busted! Let's see if it really is. He is roaming around. Oh yeah, of course we know where he's going. He's going towards Osawa's residence, so I don't know how we get there. No! Min recovers cry of despair echoed throughout the cafe. It can't be too loud since neighbors and stuff, you know. His laptop monitor stared back at him, black and empty. Don't you die on me, buddy! He jabbed his finger sharply at the screen. <laughs> but the computer gave no response, looking well and truly dead. Maybe he's just out of battery. What the hell? Min recover pounded his fist on the table. This would be a worst case scenario even if he weren't desperately pressed for time. Guess I'll just have to write by hand then. <laughs> Thank god he's so optimistic as well. Not quite as optimistic as Yanagishita, but still kinda. He rummaged around inside his bag and pulled out a notebook. I can still do this, he shouted, doing his best to psych himself up for the task at hand. I will still do this. Uh, excuse me, sir? The waitress appeared timidly beside him. Did he bring that lamp with him? <laughs> what? Minorikawa snapped, his pen still flying across the paper. Sir, if you could please quiet down. <laughs> My damn computer just broke. Am I allowed to scream or two? Minorikawa was in no state of mind to be quiet. If it weren't for the deadline he was racing to meet, he'd probably have gone on screaming until he passed out. Your computer is broken, you say? The waitress peered at the monitor. Yeah, look! It just suddenly stopped displaying anything. <laughs> Could it be that um, the battery is just dead? I f didn't I just fucking say it? <laughs> Minorikawa set bolt upright. That's it! <laughs> the waitress flinched as Minorikawa's finger jabbed toward her face. I hadn't considered that possibility. Hey, let me plug in somewhere. <laughs> Oh, that's a, that's a euphemism if I've ever seen one. There's an outlet right there, sir. She pointed at an outlet by Minorikawa's feet, making no attempt to hide her exasperation. Minorikawa plugged in the power cable and the monitor sprang to life as normal. So, um, now that that's sorted, would you please be quiet, sir? Don't talk to me! You're interfering with my writing! <laughs> Don't talk to me! How dare you talk to me! Minorikawa's fingers had already begun dancing across his keyboard. With a sigh, the waitress disappeared back into the kitchen. Oh yeah, now we're talking! His fingers picked up speed as he went about touch typing. The act of typing at a keyboard without looking at the keys, the aspiration of computer novices everywhere. The typical method involves placing the index fingers on the F and J keys, with the middle ring and pinky fingers resting on the A, S, and D, OK, L and semicolon keys to either side, from which all other keys are easily reached. With practice, a touch typist can instinctively hit the correct key every time without looking. Uh, little known fun fact, I don't touch type by that um, method. I do touch type with my own self-learned one though. <laughs> so I can, I can type pretty fucking fast and I can type without looking at my keyboard. But I'm not resting my fingers on the little, little knobs on the on the keyboard, on the F and J key. The pros and cons of surveillance cameras. Proprietor of outdated electronics shop overseas high-tech camera system. Bedlam at bogus weight loss drink sales demo. Bankrupted organizer remains undiscouraged. Poor Yanagishita. <laughs> now Minorikawa's spirits were riding high. His writing rolled along at a brisk pace. Sir? It was waitress again, her voice yanking Minorikawa right out of his soaring mood. Sir, shut the fuck up! <laughs> now what? Has the President of the United States agreed to give me a one-on-one -on -one interview? The waitress's eyes went wide with confusion. <laughs> huh? Because unless it's something that important, do not speak to me right now. <laughs> but she was undeterred. Sir, please, if you could just be a little quieter. Minorikawa's fingers ceased them rattling across the keys. Just what sound do you have a problem with? All I've been doing is writing a copy. Um, well, for the last while actually, you've been talking while you write, sir. Talking? Minorikawa tilted his head in confusion. 
Yes, sir. You've been talking about an electronics store and some bogus weight loss drink. I assume that's what you're writing about? Uh, are you saying you've been narrating my copy aloud while writing it? That's right, sir. Other customers sitting nearby were openly snickering. <laughs> well, so what? <laughs> he snapped. <laughs> he was red in the face now. You should all be delighted that you get to hear what I'm writing before the magazine goes to print. I wish I was Mina Ricava in real life, seriously. Life must be so amazing. Also, take a look at uh, Rumi and her father to the right over there. They're still in here, somehow. Well, actually, sir, one of our customers has been complaining. Complaining? <laughs> of all the nerve. Who was it? Where are they? Mina Ricava scanned the other patrons, many of whom were unsuccessfully trying to hide their laughter. It was... Oh, it was me. It was the grumpy older fellow who'd been making a scene earlier. Bogus diet fads, peeping security cameras. Reminds me of that sleazy tabloid four-star general gossip I hate so much. Oh, you sure seem to know a lot about it for something you hate so much. The man's face twisted up with scorn. Your behavior is bothering everyone in here, he said. Do you not understand that? No, I don't. Hmm. I guess a reporter who writes nothing but nonsense prefers nonsense in everything he does. Mina Ricava could feel his blood boiling. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Go on, say it again. <laughs> oh, gladly. Nonsense, filth, cut swell up. Flip flap! You bastard, how dare you! <laughs> Mina Ricava stormed over the man's table. Flim flam indeed. Focus or insincere content. Few things anger me Min recover more than reporters using dishonest means to create a story. Oh Jesus Christ, Min recover! What would you say about 2019? Having his own book called Flim Flam would naturally make him blow his top. Just who are you calling Flim Flam? Dude, the fuck? <laughs> the poor other customers. The other man stood up and glowered in Min recover's face. You. You utterly lack any manners or sense of decency, for starters. I have plenty of manners and decency. I also happen to have a deadline. Bah, as if a flimflam artist like you has a work ethic. Stop calling me flimflam. The waitress inserted herself between the two men. Hmm, nice. Gentlemen, please stop fighting. I... Uh... I demand that you remove this man at once, the older fellow barked. He's the one you should be kicking out, Minorikawa Minori shot back. By now he was ready to go for this guy's throat. Please, the waitress pleaded. Both of you return to your seats. She grabbed onto Minorikawa and began to forcibly drag him back to his table. Oh, it's too late for that. Giving in to his anger, Minorikawa threw a punch at the troublemaker. Okay, just calm down. Mina Recover did his best to swallow his pride. Let's let's do that for now, since I don't think we want to actually hurt Rumi's dad. Just calm down. Mina Recover did his best to swallow his pride. Whatever. He huffed. I don't have time for this anyway. He stalked back to his seat. The other man snorted and sat down with a scowl. Be the smarter dude in this situation, Mina Recover. Just back off and let him let him be an asshole, you know? The needless interruption, just when he'd finally gotten into writing mode, had all but killed Minorikawa's motivation. He decided he needed to take a breather. He turned to the waitress. One spaghetti Napolitan, please. Oh, I've been talking about this. Spaghetti flavored with tomato ketchup. It's not fucking tomato ketchup, it's tomato sauce. Seriously, do they call sauce ketchup in Japan? Because ketchup is actually... Oh, fuck, I hit my desk there. Ketchup is fucking disgusting compared to real tomato sauce. Ketchup is sweetened bullshit, basically. Napolitan is a corruption of Neapolitan, though the dish itself has no connection to the Italian city of Naples, Napoli. Rather, it originated as a menu item at a hotel in Yokohama shortly after World War II. Are you serious? Did it really originate in Japan? There is also a spaghetti dish from Nagoya called Milanese, which likewise has no connection to the Italian city of Milan. I have to look this up. I'm seriously doubtful about the fact-checking on this one. He might not have a lot of spare time, but working on an empty stomach wouldn't do him any favors. While waiting for his order to come out, he decided to read back over the copy he'd written so far. What? 
When he looked back at the monitor, the screen was black yet again. Looking down at his feet, he saw that the power cable was now unplugged. Hey, what kind of cafe are you people running here? He shouted. <laughs> the waitress hurried over, looking combative. Sir, you yanked that out yourself when you stood up earlier. What? A, a likely story. It's the truth, sir. Minri Cover pointed at one of the customers sitting next to him. Is she telling the truth? Did I really yank my power cord out myself? The man nodded sheepishly. <laughs> God, poor guy. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, well, then that's the outlet's fault for being someplace where it's unpl- It's the outlet's fault for being someplace where it unplugs so easily, Minery Cover squawked. Oh, Minery Cover's gonna kill me one of these days. His fucking voice and his fucking lines. The waitress marched away, head held high. Just make sure that spaghetti's delicious, Minery Cover shouted after her. Do that and I'll consider this even. Oh, and loaded with cheese. Lots of cheese. Oh, give, give me a second, I need to drink something real quick. Fuck me, if I have to take a break after 10 minutes of reading Mini Recover, this is not a good sign for today's recording session, really. He plugged the power cable back in, then let out a heavy sigh. In all his writing fervor, he hadn't thought to save his work. Always make sure to save your work to avoid losing data. Honestly, why is it that your computer only seems to freeze when you've forgotten to save your stuff? Well, it's one of the big mysteries, right? He was probably going to have to rewrite most of what he'd done. Poor Minri I wonder, can we just go through this one in, in one go? Because we did every other route so far. Excuse me? Minri looked up to see a young woman standing there. Who is it? I'm so sorry, she said. About my fa- Oh, it's Rumi! About my father. She gave a tiny bow. Your father? Oh, the rude old man. He's just a little worked up right now. Please don't pay him any mind. So what? You waiting on your boyfriend? Huh? The woman was taken aback. I happened to hear you two arguing earlier. Would have been about two hours ago. Oh, I see. An awkward, embarrassed smile came to the woman's face. I thought he was going to ask my father for permission to marry me, so we've been waiting for him, but... But he hasn't shown up? No, he must be really busy. She cast her eyes down sadly. Oh, come on. Mina Recover took a better look at her. She was gorgeous, which is probably one of the reasons why we haven't seen her fucking face yet, right? A woman who fur looks wasn't something he saw every day. That was for sure. Say... Oh. Say, would you mind talking with me for a bit? He asked. Me? Yeah. I kinda need to turn my mood around here. Well, uh, okay. At least until my father gets back. The woman cast an anxious look toward the restrooms. <laughs> What's your name? Rumi. She sat down across from him. Wait a second, aren't you? Min Recover peered at Rumi's face. One of those twins that was... Are you serious? One of those twins that was chosen as Miss Midoriyama? Does she look like them? How many of them are there? <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Does she really look like them? Does she look that young, actually? Rumi shook her head. No, not me. No? Darn, didn't think I'd be that lucky. He took a sip of his now cold coffee. I do know the girls you're talking about, though, Rumi said. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I know this is shopped, but... <laughs> I like to think that they tried to take this picture um, without any alteration. <laughs> <laughs> Minri Kava spat out his coffee in surprise. Rumi squeaked in alarm as the spray splattered her face. Guess it's not the first time this happened to her. But Minri Kava leaned in unconcerned. <laughs> they had to get an excuse to make her hide her face. <laughs> Fucking hell. You mean it? You really know them? Yes, Rumi replied. You're talking about the Osawa twins, right? She got out a handkerchief and wiped the coffee from her face as she spoke. Osava, huh? Mina Recover glanced down at the project proposal on the table. Sexy squared. Twins share top prize at local university beauty contest. Midriyama Academy, Maria and Hitomi Osava. 
Yes, that's it. The Osawa twins. I actually won Miss Midoriyama myself a few years ago. This year, I served as one of the judges. Hmm. Minorikawa adopted a self-satisfied pose. Guess I really was born under the right sign to be a freelancer. The lead's just come to me. <laughs> um, sure, Rumi muttered. Okay, let's talk basics then. Tell me what you know about these girls. Well, I don't really know them personally. Rumi continued to dab at the coffee on her face. Seriously, ever since dabbing became a thing, whenever you read the word in its proper context, it's just ruined. But now that you ask, I do remember hearing that they'd entered the contest separately. Wait, separately? Now Min Recover was a bit confused. Yes, that's right. I'd assumed they'd entered as a pair, but apparently not. I wonder why. I mean, they're twins. Don't they look alike? Wear the same clothes? Do everything together? And say the same things at the same time and stuff? Rumi chuckled and shook her head. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Besides, these two aren't identical. They're fraternal twins, she said. They do kind of look alike, though. Twins who were born at the same time from two eggs that were fertilized separately. Fraternal twins do not share the same genetic information. They can differ in such characteristics as sex and blood type, though there are cases of fraternal twins resembling one another almost as closely as identical twins. Okay, Maria and Hitomi Osawa happen to look very closely alike, but they do not have the same blood type. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Calling it now. One of them has Bombay blood. Just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Also, at a glance, they do look very similar. Still, how should I put this? They both give off a very different impression. Oh, now that sounds interesting. Yeah, Maria is cool while Hitomi is a stupid basic bitch. Mind explaining what you mean? Minori Kava opened his memo pad. I talked to them briefly after the award ceremony. The older sister struck me as really energetic, but the younger one was more quiet and reserved. Minori Kava's investigative senses were tingling. I wouldn't figure a shy girl would want to enter a campus beauty contest. I suppose not, no. So which one of them is supposed to be the older and which one is the younger one, since energetic sounds like Tama slash Maria, and quiet and reserved sounds like it to me, but... Whenever Osawa was thinking of them, Maria was the shy one, right? The one who barely talked and stuff. Hmm, weird. Hmm, yeah, I don't suppose you've got... Oh, hmm, yeah, I don't suppose you've got anything juicier, Minri Kava asked. Rumi frowned. Would you like to just go ask them yourself? She said. They don't live very far from here. Well, hold the phone. Minori Kava could hardly believe what had just fallen into his lap. The advance info on the project proposal had mentioned the girls were students at Midoriyama, but hadn't given an actual address. If he could talk to them directly, now that would be paid out. You know where they live? Well, not exactly. I just heard that they lived in Shoto. Ah, Shoto. It wasn't far away. A car or motorcycle could, they de get, could get there in about 10 minutes. What happened to me there? <laughs> it would be quicker than going to Midoriyama Academy and he'd be able to meet with the girls themselves. Minori Kava flashed a quick look toward the restroom. It looked like Rumi's father had just gotten back. Sorry, she said. I should be going. No problem. And thank you. Rumi gave him a quick nod, then hurried back to her seat. Is she gonna get chewed out because she helped him now? By her father, I mean. Minori Kappa grabbed the, direct, grabbed the directory from the public phone and flipped through the pages. What's wrong with me today? <laughs> to his surprise, there were only five listings for the name Osawa with addresses in Shoto. It was neither a Maria nor a Hitomi, but he hadn't expected there to be. He'd need to find her parents. Wasting no time, he called up the first Osawa on the list. Oh! Are you Kenji Osawa? Yes. Are your daughters Maria and Hitomi? <laughs> yes? Boop, hang up. I now get it. Oh god, it was so creepy when it happened, even though the explanation for it is so innocent. <laughs> Shit. Oh, this is what I love about this game though. It all makes sense in the end, somehow. Bingo! Minori Kappa couldn't help but pump his fist in excitement. He'd gotten the right place on his first try. Way to go, me! He committed the house number listed in the phone book to memory. 
Just then the waitress reappeared with a disgruntled expression and Minnie recovers out of spaghetti Neapolitan. Here you are, sir. <laughs> the fuck is with this cheese? It actually looks kinda nice though. Oh my god, I could go for some now. Oh ho. The pasta was piled high with an impressive amount of grated cheese. It looked almost like a miniature mountain of snow. You did say lots of cheese, sir, the waitress told him. She set down a canister of cheese and a bottle of Tabasco. The sauce made by the US-based McIlhenny company consisting of hot peppers, grain vinegar and rock salt. Do we need to read this? Let's see, it has been claimed that Tabasco was first important to Japan by a certain well-known former pro wrestler, but this story is untrue. Oh, this looks good, Minorikawa exclaimed. He twirled some spaghetti up with his fork and shoved it into his mouth. The slightly sour sweetness of the ketchup blended perfectly with the mellow flavor of the cheese. Oh, that is tasty! There was nothing like satisfying gr grub to lift the spirits. He turned back to his laptop, still wolfing down the spaghetti. What about her? Alright, we're back in action. Let's do this! Yet again, he unthinkingly blurted his words aloud as he slipped back into writing mode. I've got this! I've got this! With ketchup smeared around his mouth, he set his fingers tapping away at his keys. The waitress let out another groan of dismay. <laughs> huh? You say something? <laughs> uh, why does everyone eat like an animal in this game? <laughs> Mina recovered glanced in her direction, but the waitress faked a smile. No, sir, I don't think so. Yep, well then go away! You're distracting me! <laughs> you fucking asshole! <laughs> the moment he looked away, she clenched her fist in indignation. Hmm? <laughs> Nothing, sir. Good luck with your work, sir. I don't need luck. I've got this! <laughs> Eyes jumping back and forth between pasta and computer, Minnie Recover got to work on his copy once more. Before long, he was oblivious to every sound in the cafe around him. Ah, oh, this, is, this is the best, seriously. I love it. When he finally snapped out of writing mode, he glanced at his watch. It was 2.20. 20 past 2. PM, I guess. Almost time for him to head to his next interview. Why, why is reading English clock times so hard for me? <laughs> Better get a move on. <laughs> guess learning the clock in another language is just weird altogether. Kimizuka's taxi came by just as Minorikawa was hurrying out of the cafe. Well, what a pleasant surprise, Minorikawa called out. Nice timing, my man. Kimizuka's stopped look quickly vanished behind an expression of professional resignation. Uh, do you need a ride, sir? You know it, Minorikawa replied. First, head to Shoto. After that, I need to get to Sakuragawa Wow, as he cast his gaze out of the sides of the city, Minorikawa mulled over his plan for the next part of the day. First, he'd interview the Miss Midoriyama girls. Then he'd meet with the head of that feared troop. In order to leave himself enough time to write his copy, that meant... I'd like to get this all wrapped up in 20 minutes, he said. Can you make that happen? Kimizuka flashed a grin. That will incur a special fare, sir. Oh, special, Minorikawa said as he got settled in his seat. I love that word. Kimizuka stepped on the gas. 